Hello to all the amazing internet marketers out there. As you know, different advertisers, which have keywords that are triggered by the same search terms, are competing with one another to get their ads shown on Google search. This competition is called by Google an ad auction. You may be surprised to discover that before you're competing in the ad auction with other advertisers, there is something going on inside of your account called the internal ad auction. With the internal ad auction, your keywords are essentially competing with each other. The winning keyword will be the one that will then compete with other advertisers in the ad auction itself. When you have too much internal account competition, you end up losing a bit of control over your own account. An ad group with a tailor-made ad for a specific group of words may not get those words delivered to it. Instead, the traffic might go to another group which isn't best suited to cater to those, to, to those searchers. Also, when you are competing with yourself inside of your own account and you're lowering bids with one keyword, the traffic can end up jumping to another keyword, thus eliminating your control as far as how much you're able to pay per click. Which is why today I'm going to explain to you how to run a report to identify if this is happening and also where it is happening inside of your Google Ads account. And then I'll explain to you what you need to do in order to remedy the problem. To start, we will need to extract the data from Google by running a search term report. There are several ways to run a search term report, but for this lesson, I will show you how to do it from the reporting section in Google Ads. Now, the search term report we're going to want to run is going to be for all campaigns whose targeting overlaps. First, log into your Google Ads account. Next, click on the Reports icon. Click Custom to create a custom report. Select Table. Next, you'll want to filter the campaigns whose group you'd like to analyze for this report. It is important that you only choose campaigns which can compete with each other due to similar settings such as geography or device to name a few. To enable the filter, click on the filter icon. Then choose campaign from the drop down menu. And next choose the relevant campaigns and hit apply. Now you're going to want to set the relevant date range. It is important that the range you are looking at is one where all the campaigns are running side by side. If not, you might look at bad results when there aren't any. Things aren't competing with each other if they aren't running over the same time period. Now we are ready to create the table. For rows, select campaign, ad group, search keyword, and search term. And for columns, we're going to look at just impressions. The reason why we're looking at only impressions is because we were just concerned to see if there is any activity at all. So we are using impressions as a way to gauge whether or not a search term ever tra was triggered by your account. Next, click on the download icon. Select excel.csv. Now the report will automatically download when ready. Google gives you the option to save this report to easily create it again in the future. You can also set to schedule the report so that way it can be automatically created for you. I do highly recommend that this report is one of many that you have in your arsenal of reports that you use to regularly measure and gauge your campaign's health and performance. So you may want to consider scheduling it to run on a regular basis. Now that the report has downloaded, go ahead and open it up in Microsoft Excel. After you open your report, the first thing you're going to want to do is save it as an Excel file, or in other words, an .xlsx file. Next, we will need to concatenate campaign names and ad groups in a separate column. This is to distinguish from ad groups in different campaigns that could have the same name. First, we want to add a column before column A by inserting a column. In the cell to the left of the campaign name column, concatenate column B of that row with column C of the same row separated by the caret symbol, which you could do by hitting Shift 6. 
Next, drag the formula you entered all the way to the bottom of column A so that it applies to every row of your report. Now, we'll need to create a pivot table, which is where you're going to conduct this analysis. Start by clicking on Insert and choose Pivot Table. Next, select the appropriate table range. Place Search Term as the first row and add Campaign, Carrot, Ad Group right under it. Next, add Impressions as values. Collapse the rows so that only short search terms are shown. And Impressions as values. What you see here is essentially a search term report. You are viewing every search term that has hit the campaigns you have downloaded over the time period you have specified with the number of impressions they have delivered. One thing that I strongly recommend you do whenever you look at a Google report is sort by top values down so that way you can see what matters the most. Let's go ahead and look at the impression value column and sort from top down. And what we have here is a list of your top search terms that have hit your account. Now if you expand one of the rows, you're going to see a list of which ad groups those search terms have landed in, as well as the number of impressions for each one. So now you're essentially able to see the competition for every search term in your account. Of course, doing this one at a time for every row is going to be a bit daunting, so here's a little shortcut. Go ahead and take ad groups and add it in values and set the value as count of ad groups. Now, to your report, I'll show you the number of ad groups that every search term in your report is landing into. Now that you have completed the report, you can go ahead and start to analyze it and fix the problem. I would start with the search terms that have delivered the most impressions, which have the most competition, figure out, which, look at which ad groups the traffic is falling into, and choose one group that you would like that search term to, to, to lead to. Chances are you've already made that decision when you built the group for the search term. Now once you've chosen the preferred ad group, you could eliminate the search term from hitting the other groups by deleting keywords that are triggering the terms or adding keywords as negatives. Say for example, you are advertising mobile phone chargers and you built your campaigns using multiple groups, as you should. You use multiple groups so that way you could have different ads catered to a group of search terms. And this example that I'm giving, let's say the more generic group, just has words related to phone chargers. In it is the phrase keyword, phone chargers. You have also built another ad group, which is a bit more specific for Android phone chargers. That group has ads that you would like to be displayed for users searching for Android phone chargers. However, both phone chargers and phrase and Android phone chargers as a keyword can match for the search term Android phone chargers. To eliminate this competition, you can simply put the word Android as a negative in the phone chargers group. Now, the phone charger group cannot possibly be triggered by any searches that also include the word Android. Thus, the traffic that these words are bringing, the phone charger words and the Android charger words, are going to be more specific for the tra traffic that it is designated for so that you'll be able to better understand its value and give it a more accurate bid. Also, each group will have more targeted ads for the traffic that they are designed to serve for. To keep better control of your Google search campaigns, remember, regularly run this report to try to find any inter-account competition. And this concludes my weekly wisdom session for this week. I hope you all enjoyed it, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.